Before we use a meter, we have to test it. And there's two things that we need to do. Number one, see down here, it says category three, 600 volts. Only these meters are allowed to go inside these boilers for repair. The next thing, we have to test the meter itself. And we do that by simply going over to ohms. And you can see OL, open line, and then an M, ohm. So that's millions of ohms. And it's in auto-ranging mode, which we have to be. We're not allowed to use any others. So the next stage is going to be, I'm going to make an X here on these probes. And within two seconds, that OL has to go to zeros, full stop, and then a number. That number has to change within 10 seconds. We do know that some flukes don't do this and some do. We don't understand why because of us, the rep, and um, he doesn't know either. Nobody knows. Some models do, some models don't. All of these have to. So let's do the first test then. We're going to make an X and press hard. And there we are, two seconds and it's refreshing. Let go, two seconds and it's got back to OL. That's a perfect multimeter ready for use. Before we can begin fault finding and seeing what's wrong with the boiler, we need to make sure that it's off and dead and no voltage is going through. And that's called a four part electrical test. And they consist of number one is earth continuity. And that means that that big fat green wire coming into the house continues all the way to this screw because that's where we pick it up to the casing. The second test is going to be short circuit. The third one is resistance to earth. And the final one is polarity. And that's when we switch the boiler on, but no demand to see whether the 230 volts or more is actually on the brown live. The neutral is zero. And obviously the earth is going to be zero. So I'll do each chapter separately. So let's go back to the beginning. I've removed the fuse and here we are, I've checked it. You must do this every single time you go into the house because we are riddled with boilers and they have 13 amp fuses which blow up PCBs. So you don't want to be uh, liable for that. The next thing is we need to check whether that screw is actually earthed. And the way we do that is simply always the black lead will go to the casing and the red lead will go to the screw and as you can see immediately I've got zeros and it's being refreshed which means that the earth is continuing with no resistance all the way from that consumer unit. We also move the red lead onto the PCB earth where it comes in on the flex and then you also go where the yellow and greens meet on the boiler casing so there's three places we do it and that's before you do anything else to make sure that we've got a good earth and now we can continue to the next stage the short circuit test is a very simple but very important test and what we're looking at is the resistance between that live terminal and the neutral terminal coming in so it's measuring parts of the boiler we need to turn the multimeter onto ohms. It's quite safe because as you can see the padlock's there. Test the meter. Yes, that's working fine. And as always, we have to put the black lead in first. And then finally the live to there. And we'll give it a moment or two to calibrate itself. And it's now reading 53 ohms. Now normally, as in the book that we have here, uh, page 14, which is our short circuit test, we're asking for 100 ohms or higher. But because there are different ways of plugging in the different components onto a PCB, it could go as low as 20 ohms. So if you do read between that live and neutral, for example, 60 ohms, in theory, that would be a 4 amp fuse. If you have that less than 100 ohms, 
please phone the factory before you do anything else and ask for guidance. Say, I'm doing a short circuit test, I've got 53 ohms, is that okay? Or is something wrong? And they may say, oh, right, that is wrong, it should be a lot higher than that, therefore you need a new PCB and you would be wise to replace maybe a fan or a pump or another component before you do that because that could be damaged with the new PCB. So don't use a reconditioned one. It has to be the latest version from the factory for the model of the boiler that you're working on. So that covers our short circuit test. It has to be. So here's an example of a non-condensing boiler still doing the same three tests. So we'll put the multimeter into ohms get the probes, short it out, and that's a pass. So the first stage is going to be earth continuity. So black lead goes to the casing, red lead goes to the earth connection, and we can see we've got zeros, which means the earth is continuing with no resistance. The second test is going to be our short circuit. So again, black lead will go to neutral, red lead will go to live, and then we'll just wait a few seconds for the multimeter to calibrate itself. And it's reading 280 ohms. And you can see the one and the two is being refreshed. So that's a pass. The next stage is going to be our resistance to earth. So we go back to the casing. And then we go back here to the live terminal. And we expect to see OL. But we don't. We're seeing 280. So alarm bells are ringing. Something is wrong. So we'll put this into the neutral setting. And there we can see zeros. So that means this is a complete failure because a neutral wire is touching an earth wire. So if I was to plug this in and switch it on, the board would definitely blow up and maybe take another component with it. So this is a really good example of the four-part electrical test and it's failed on the third part.